Hey, how's it going? Well, this is take two. Luckily, everything's still stuck up. Um, hopefully, the audio will be better here. Same situation. My good friend, whose music is playing right now, Jeff Dahl. Uh, this here album. He just told me I could uh, freely use his music, so I'm super happy. And I had forgotten that uh, I was there on the day that he did the photo shoot for this record in this picture. And in this picture, I'm cut out of it because I'm like down here like this, which is fine. I'm not, I wasn't in the band. Uh, we, I just happened to be hanging out that day. But anyway, this is one of my favorite uh, records by him. And what I didn't say the last time I did this, the first time, is inside here, the liner notes, he put uh, the music musicians who played on here. And it's him. And then there's Dave Nasworthy from Chemical People on drums. Uh, Jaime Pina plays lead guitar on Pretty Blonde Hair. Paul Cutler, my love and my hero from 45 Grave and... Well, lots of other stuff, but 45 Grave was my jam with Paul. Uh, and he plays on Mick and Keith Killed Brian. And Mike Reese played uh, lead guitar on Chemical Eyeballs. John Duffy, God rest his soul, sweet guy, played bass on Cherry Bomb. Bruce Duff, another good friend, backing vocals. And Danita Sparks played Additional Guitar Mayhem on Dirt. So all fantastic musicians that, I don't know if they're all from L.A., but that's where I know them all from. So anyway, I am talking today about Night Sky, which starred Sissy Spacek and J.K. Uh, Simmons. Two actors that I really enjoy, but I haven't seen a lot of uh, Sissy Spacek over the years. I'm sure she's been in things. But I do have, like, certain things I like to watch, so it's likely that I miss those things. But J.K. Simmons, I have gone lots of places with him in his roles. Not when he was the drum teacher. I, 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 that, I didn't watch that. But in Oz, um, yeah, <laughs> really good in HBO's Oz. And uh, Counterpart, which they canceled. Oh, my God, they're so dumb. It's so good. It is... Like a dimensional story, a poly-dimensional story. And it is a sci-fi, but there's no spaceships or space creatures. It takes place on Earth, I don't know, 37. <laughs> another version, another dimension of Earth. But it's situated in such a way that there's a spot where this government agency is attached to its mirror image in this other dimension and you get there through like an underground passage it's crazy good and i can't believe they canceled it but anyway night sky <clears throat> it's a series and so uh I th i'm just going to talk about season one because that's what i've watched so far that's what's available and i sure hope they bring it back on the surface, the series, I'm just going to kind of read my notes here, so sorry if I'm not looking at the camera all the time. <clears throat> On the surface, this series is about an older couple with a secret, an ancient order that acts behind the scenes to affect society that are the true shepherds of the treasure the couple have found. It's about the object and the swirling dynamics within the order. You get the idea that the infighting and even murder combined with an untold but alluded to loss of information or interruption of some kind <clears throat> that has them understaffed and unaware of all of the location of all of these like transporter device things. <clears throat> no matter uh, the group is in the state. Oh, I think I <laughs> jumped ahead of myself there. <clears throat> No matter, oh, no matter, the group is in a state of mostly unspecified disarray, as evidenced by the mother and daughter who travel to the U.S. from their home, which I think is in South America. But what I got from it the most was a focus on relationships. 
like the couple's relationship, of course, because they are like the stars. And that would be Franklin York played by Simmons and Irene York played by Spacek. Um, they, it's about their relationship and both of their relationship to their dead son and how that affects their primary relationship. It's the way each one relates to the orphaned granddaughter. The mother is also absent for her, so it's about her relationships with both of her grands and how adrift she feels in the midst of all of that. It's about uh, the South American mother and daughter and the mother's relationship with the order and the mixed feelings stirred by her feelings in regard to the order and their part in whatever happened to the absent father of her girl. <laughs> it's about the nosy neighbor guy and his also tolerant wife. It's about the young mysterious man who arrives suddenly and falls into all of the relationships and upends them all with joy, fear, resentment, and confusion. Also, uh, fulfillment and answers to questions not a one of them knew they had. But mostly for me, the story is about York and his journey of self-discovery and all of the uh, aforementioned. Maybe it was the catalyst of Jude, the, the guy that just dropped into everyone's life, making it possible for him to get a look at himself, a good look at himself, through the eyes of others. It shows how depending on others to fulfill that which he needed to see, he can really only find within himself. And that's true of all of us. We search for stuff outside of ourselves when really what we need most is within ourselves. We just don't know really well how to find it or find our way to it. <clears throat> uh, hold on dead air for a second. Oh, I'm so sorry. This is my favorite song, <laughs> Chemical Eyeballs. Uh, come on, brain work. Okay. Uh, it shows how, depending on others to feel, fulfill which he needed to see, can really only be found within. When we're forced as he is to reassess crucial parts of himself, he thought impervious to and ineligible to change. However, he is shown how becoming comfortable and solidified in your ways can be pretty painful <laughs> when we resist it. And the truth can hurt. Overall, the tone of the show felt like a warm autumn afternoon on the porch swing, rocking idly, thinking nothing, while watching dead leaves drop from trees as they fall or float on a breeze. Even with all the excitement and danger, all of it had an everything as it should be vibe. That's when, in this case or any other, we're feeling the touch of spirit. When things are just, even if it's screwed up, it's screwed up in just the right way. So I don't know, like I said, I oops, <laughs> super hope that that show is renewed and I hope that you will watch it and <clears throat> I hope that everyone will give a counterpart a look. Thank you. Thank you and good night. <laughs>